Today we're going to be making this unique macrame wall hanging. Stay tuned! Be sure to take a screenshot of today's project for your easy reference. Let's get started. First attach all 20 cords using a lark's head knot on our wooden dowel. I use two different color cords for this project, but you do what feels right. But fun fact, I was the lucky person who got to name the color for the blue rope. I named it Azure Sky. Once you have all 20 cords on there, we're going to be tying a full row of square knots. If I'm going too fast for you, or if you're unfamiliar with your knots, feel free to go check out my knot tutorial playlist. Also, you can adjust the speed of this video by clicking on the three dot icon at the top right corner of this video. But essentially, a square knot is left over right and under, and right over left and under. Alrighty, let's speed this up and move along to the next row so I can show you what to do next. Okay, for our second row, we're going to alternate by skipping the first two cords and tying a square knot picot. We're going to be tying a full row of picots, and they are so much fun to make. Let me show you. To tie your picots, you're going to make regular square knots, but we're going to be tying them about two and a half to three inches below our previous row. They don't have to be super perfect. You don't need to measure them or anything. But I do find it's easier to gauge the gap by tying them all straight across like this before you push them up. So let's continue tying our square knots straight across all the way to the very end of this row. Okay, here comes my most favorite part. Watch this. To create the pico effect, all you have to do is push your square knot all the way up to the top. And it is incredibly satisfying to do this. It might just be me, I'm a little odd, but I love it. Once you've pushed them all up, let's move along to our next row. Now this row is quite simple, it is just a full row of square knots straight across. But I should mention that each row we are alternating. Also, take very care to pull all your pico loops forward. We don't want any loops in the back. We're not looking back there. They need to be pulled to the front. And just note here, after every pico row, there will always be a full row of square knots after. And the reason for this is because picots like to slip up and down, and when you do a row of square knots underneath, it just secures it. So let's just zip on through this row of square knots and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, for our next row, it's a row of picots again, but this time it's a little bit trickier. Just like we did before, we're going to alternate our knots and space them out about two and a half to three inches below our last row. And just like last time, we're going to go straight across the entire row, except we're not going to tie the last knot at the very end. So leave the last six cords and I'll show you what we're going to be doing with them. But before that, let's finish our picots by pushing our knots up. <laughs> I find that so satisfying. So with our next set of four cords, we're going to be tying just a regular square knot. And don't worry about the last two cords, it's because we're alternating that they're just going to have to hang there. Okay, you guessed it, our next row is just a straight row of square knots all the way across again. And don't forget to always pull your loops to the front of your work, they tend to like to hide in the back. And they're much more difficult to pull forward once you've secured your square knot. Okay, so for our next row, we're going to do another row of picots, but this time we're not going to tie the last two picots at the end of our row. So every row of picots, we're always going to be decreasing one knot each row. And the remainder of the row will always be just regular square knots. With this pattern, there's going to be a triangular effect using texture, and I'll show you what that looks like when we're a bit further along. 
the pattern doesn't quite emerge until you're a little ways into it. So just stick with me here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so by now the pattern is starting to form. Let me zoom in so you can see it a bit better. The video doesn't really do it justice, but you can kind of see that it's flat here, but curly on the other side. It's a really unique pattern and an interesting way to incorporate texture. Okay, let's carry on and we'll see the shape form even better. Okay, so let's finish this off and I'm going to show you an excellent way how to cut straight lines. Masking tape is an excellent way to really create a sharp line. It also really helps with cleanup because that way you don't have a whole bunch of loose cords everywhere. They're all taped together. However, make sure all your cords are straight. Before you go, I'd like to give a special thanks to a new YouTuber friend of mine who supplied the sound for this video. I like to show support to other fellow artists even though our mediums are not the same. And especially through these crazy times of 2020, we all really need to support one another. I'll attach his links in the description box below and feel free to drop him a blue heart emoji on my behalf. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.